Y'all remember the company Mountain? They made the Macalo mouse and then the Everest keyboard? Two awesome, really cool, innovative products. And that's what we have today. Another new interesting product from Mountain in the Macalo Max. Oh, kind of. So let's go on and kick it off with what we're gonna get inside our box first. Well, here we go. Oh, hold on. I actually missed. You get a manual and some stickers as well. Where the heck do I even start with all of this? Let's go on and start, I guess, with the shape. That, that, that'll probably be the best place to start here, right? So let me shove some of this other stuff out of the way here. And yes, as you're seeing, you have multiple variations to use this mouse. Right over here, I got it in the bear with nothing attached to the side. You take your sides, they kind of slide in there and magnetize on. Bam, plop on your other side, create it what you want. Bam, and it just slides in. As you see, we got that big lump on the side right now really cozy and this thing is absolutely jumbo if you kind of want it more regular like the classic Macalo size bam right there and that's what you have again you can pop off this side over here slides in magnetized bam you got that thumb rest that's going to make it jumbo here as we see right there i don't think i've ever put a bigger mouse in my hand now i'm going to throw up a screenshot of the dimensions of this mouse and again there's so many different ways you can put this mouse with the different sides on it so on and so forth to really kind of suit your grip style or hand shape, I guess. No matter which way you slice it, this is a big mouse. Even back to the original Macalo, whenever we put the original sides on to get that core shape, it is still a big mouse. But when you put it like this, holy smokes, it is massive. Now also talking about it being massive, this is an incredibly, ridiculously heavy mouse. You even have some extra weights right here, which are Kind of different. As you see, you got the cutouts right here. You got the full solid. You got this sliced out over here. Now, Mountain's calling it the gravity control. Slap these down in there and kind of move it around how you want. If you want it heavier on one side or the other side. Again, what is this stinking 2010 where we want to put weights in our mice? I honestly never thought I would see a mouse where you can put weights in it again from back in the days. Now, the real funny thing about this mouse, again, talking about it being really heavy here, and you all know, old Techni, I'm not a weight crazy person, right? I can handle a heavier mouse. But talking about this, even in any of the marketing material, they never mention the weight of this mouse. So, so anyways, we're gonna put it on here and see multiple different variations. Right now, ju just for the heck of it, without any sides, which isn't how anyone's gonna use it, right? Cause it's jabbing into your side here. I wanna see the weight. When we slap this on a scale, we're getting 99.3. 99.3 without any sides and without any weights. How you can't use it. Oh, okay, let's go on and put it at the regular core size, the Macala, right? So let's get our sides on right here. Let's go on and slap it onto the scale. 108.9, 109 gram. Mice just aren't this heavy anymore, you know? I, I wanna put it like this. And I haven't checked this, guys. And again, it's in none of the paperwork that they sent. This is the jumbo size. Let's see what we're getting here. 115 grams. Like, why even put this in? Do, do you want to put in an extra weight right down here and get up to the 126 grams? Like, it, it, and it's so heavy, putting in these weights, it doesn't even make a difference. You don't even feel a difference if it's 122 grams. I'm sorry, Mountain, but nobody wants a heavy mouse like this anymore. And again, that's coming from someone that doesn't really harp on weight or can really handle a weight with a little bit of loft. But this isn't loft, this is a stinking workout. Out. But now talking about being able to interchange it and really kind of tweak it and customize it how you want, the build of it is really solid. As you see, they just magnetize on there. You can see on the bottom, you got these little lips. So bam, whenever you want to take it off, you just kind of put your finger in there and it slides out really easy. You got that finger groove to get those weights out of the bottom uh, it's so hard guys it's so hard right but anyways it is put together there's no creaking there's no rattling there's no flexing this thing is stinking solid you know what i mean and i don't know if that was their thought process like let's make this so customizable but still really solid uh, they did do it but again I don't know. There's one other thing I wanted to show you that I'm not sure you caught whenever we had the uh, big old sides on right there. And I stated this back in, again, really old videos. This kind of reminds me of, like the Corsair Glaive, if any of y'all remember that classic mouse. But anything, one thing I always gripe about mice with these big old thumb rests or these big sides, if they've never put skates on the outside. So again, when you slap these on, as you can see, you got skates on the outside, skates on the front, skates on the middle, which I... 
I love. It again makes the glide easy across it. And a lot of companies will just put like a glide over here and not one over here so you feel that drag. So nice touch there. One thing, if you pick up this mouse, I want to tell you, talking about drag, these feet, they do have little plastic, as you see, clear plastic on them, which I did not know for my first few days of uh, use. And again, along with that weight and everything, it creates drag. So make sure you take those little plastic covers off of your skates to again make a slide a lot better now talking about specs and using the mouse here is packing a 3370 sensor and you get up to 80 hours of battery life with it as you saw it is wireless here you have your power switch right on the bottom bam you flick it on as you see up at the top dpi dots light up there as we saw in the original macalo and each time you switch one two three or four will light up there and then you got the rgb right around the ring again just like we saw in the original macalo now as far as switches on the macalo max is using klgm 8.0 i'll let you get a quick listen And I want you to kind of listen closer there. Listen to button number one, our left click here. Now listen to button number two, our right click. Now listen to them both together. Do you hear that inconsistency? And you actually feel it. The left click over here feels a little bit heavier. The right click feels a lot shorter and a lot crispier. Kind of like G Pro over here and then like Razer optical switch over here where it's a little heavier. It's very weird. You can clearly hear it and you clearly feel it. Now, as far as the side buttons here, I love them. They're big, they're chunky, they're right. Your thumb, at least my thumb, slides right into place on them, but they do kind of feel controller-ish. I wouldn't say excessively mushy, but they feel like a, con a controller button. There's no real tactility to it. Kind of just presses in. I do love this third button right here. Kind of like you see a sniper button on some mice or whatever. I've been using this primarily just on my editing computer right there. And I love it. If I want to get that micro adjust, I press it. And then bam, you can slow it down. Now you can load up this software and kind of tweak this mouse up to how you want. But out of the box, I love it set right like that. Because I want that micro adjustment when I'm editing a video. Bam, I can just put it right there and drag it to where I want. And sliding right off my words right there, if you just caught me using this on my editing computer, that's the only area I could use this, that I could stand it, that I can tolerate this mouse. Because again, it is ridiculously heavy. Again, you're going back to like 2005, 2010, these massive heavy mice. I can't recommend this as a gaming mouse. I'm sorry, I can't. For a productivity mouse, I want to say... I had a good time with it, which, which I did. I mean, I utilized it just like this. When I put these big old things on, I was like, yeah, no, nah, that ain't really for me. But again, using it like this, the Macalo's an amazing shape. It really is. But I don't think what this mouse is packing is what everybody wants or heck, anybody really wants. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. And what really just kind of put that into play for me is when I went ahead and went back to my Razer Death Adder V3 Pro over here. And when I went from that to this, it was night and day. And again, that just solidified how dated this mouse feels. So even though the Macalo Max is coming in at a fair price of only 90 bucks, and again, it's a solid product, this is gonna be a very small market, I honestly believe. You all know me, I can deal with a heavier mouse. I like bigger plump mice, so it's doing a lot that you think, oh, technically I like this. Well, no, it's even excessive for me, and again, I can't recommend it. But if it's something that you like, please let me know you're still shopping a product like this, this day and age in 2023. So there we go, my review of the new Macalo Max wireless gaming mouse. What an interesting product here. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And thank you so much for stopping by and watch this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope I was able to help you out. If I was, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye now. <laughs>